Hello, I'm Chris Menard. In today's video, I'm going to do Microsoft Excel, but I'm also going to be in Microsoft Forms. So I've made over 800 videos that are public. A lot of them are Excel, a lot are Microsoft Forms, Teams, Zoom, Word, PowerPoint, all that other stuff. But I've never made a video that's Microsoft Forms and Teams, so this is a first for me. And this is actually something I really have to do. I use Microsoft Forms to do surveys or polls. You can also do quizzes with it. It's part of Microsoft 365. So if you have Microsoft 365, you have Microsoft Forms. If you use Microsoft Teams, all the surveys that are built into Teams is Microsoft Forms. So you're still using Forms if you're using Teams and doing this stuff. So the issue I have is this. I recently did the Administrative Professional Day Conference at the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia. I speak there all the time. And they do an official survey themselves, but I like to do a quick survey just for me after my sessions are done. So I do three sessions usually. And for some reason, I forgot to do the third one, but it's no big deal. But I'm looking here, and here's the survey that I gave in Microsoft Forms. If I go to Preview, you can see how it looks. But I had everyone take it on their mobile phone. So as soon as I was done, they pointed at a QRC code that I created. And it said, hey, Microsoft Forms. And then this thing popped up right here. As you can see, one, two, three, four questions. The fifth question is check boxes. What do you want to see next year? And then there's a comment box, and they're all optional. So after my first session in the morning, I looked over at my responses, and there was about 25 responses because some people just didn't do it, and they weren't required to do it. And the average time was around 48 seconds. Well, after the second group came through, I now have 45 responses, and the average time complete is 16 minutes, which there's no way it took 16 minutes for people to actually complete those five questions and then the one optional. They're all actually optional. There's just no way. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you in this video, and sorry about the long introduction, there will be bookmarks down below. And I guess I should have said that at the beginning, but it's all right. How to throw your forms results into Excel. How to add a helper column to figure out actually how long it took for people to complete it. Then we're going to look at the average, the median, the max, the minimum. And then I'm going to throw in that trim mean function that I love because this is a perfect example to try to figure out what was the real average time because there's no way it took 16 minutes. So here we go. Let's go ahead and dive into this right now. Okay, so I've already showed you the forms. Here are the responses just real quick. People like my Microsoft Teams sessions that I did, as you can see here. If I just scroll through here, and here's a cool question I asked. What do you want to see next year? And there's nothing confidential here, so I don't mind showing you this. So here we go. I want to go figure out those Excel functions. So let's open in Excel. And Microsoft Excel is now running. Over on the far left is an ID that is created by Microsoft Forms. Real quick, the start time, that's when someone started on their mobile phone filling it out. Completion time, email. I didn't ask for the email. I didn't ask for their name. There we go. So here we go. I'm going to add between the start time and the completed time. I want to know how much it actually took. So I'm going to insert a column. This is going to be my helper column. When I threw this from forms into Excel, it makes it into a table, which is fine with me. So as you know, Microsoft Tables has something called a calculated column, and here it is right here. If I take the completed time, it's doing a little bit of naming too. So instead of saying C2, it says equals at completion time minus B2, which is the start time in B1. And here's that calculated column when I press Enter. Watch this. Cool, there you go. So here's tip number one. So there's the calculated column. I'm not 
considering that a tip. Tip number one is we're going to do some formatting. I do not like the way these look. So control one. I want to see hours, minutes, and seconds. So I went to custom. I went to the type box, H colon, M, M colon, S, S for seconds. There's my sample. Your sample, in case you're wondering, is always the first cell that you have selected. Click OK. And now I'm sitting here with this time to complete. Another tip, and I always talk about this, I've got these selected. Down in my status bar at the very bottom, it says the word average, and it says 16 minutes and 8 seconds. I'm going to pop back over to Microsoft Forms. Doing a little bit of rounding there. Notice the average time is 16 minutes and seven seconds. So a little bit of rounding. So my numbers are correct, first of all. I'm matching up with Microsoft Forms. Back to Excel. So there's no way it took 16 minutes. And if I just start scrolling through here and looking, let me pop up the Zoom just a tad real quick. So that time to complete, if I start looking through here, look, four hours and 20 minutes, that tells me someone probably scanned the QR code to pull the survey up and maybe just didn't do it till later that evening. Look here, six hours. So here we go with some Excel functions. I want to know the longest time, the shortest time, the average time, which we just found a second ago by highlighting, the median time, and then here we go. I'm going to do the uh, average excluding and i haven't decided what i'm going to exclude yet so one quick trick here equals max is this first function that's d through to d 46. go to the next cell down i could type it but i'm gonna do control single apostrophe change max to m i n 14 seconds was the shortest time someone did it the average time, again, I'm just going to type it this time. You could use your mouse to select. There's that 1608. And what else do I want to know? The median time. Good, I hope on this. D16, in case you're new to Excel and you're saying, Chris, can you show me those formulas? I'm going to use formula text, which I love. There are the formulas that I'm using right here. And I haven't done this last one yet. The last one is average excluding. So here we go. Before I do the average excluding, which is going to be the trim mean, by the way, I found the largest right here. And that six hours is coming from this cell right here, D45. But here's another four hours. I kind of need to figure out how many things are just way outside of the range. So the median number is 23 seconds, and that is the middle number of all the numbers in here. In case you're wondering how many numbers we have or how many people took it, I'm going to do a count, and I'm going to count D2 to D46. So 45 people. Well, here I go with the large. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a cool feature right here. I know that the maximum function is six hours, 20 minutes, and 55 seconds. We've already figured that out. But I want to know what's the second highest, the third highest, the fourth highest, so I can figure out how many do I need to exclude they are throwing the average off. Well, I'm going to use the large function. All the functions I've done so far have had one argument. The large function has two, meaning it's two required fields. What am I looking for? I'm looking for D2 to D46. I'm going to press the F4 key to make those absolute cell references, both of them, by the way. Argument number two is a comma. What are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for the largest. Well, that's the number one, but I put it over here so I can just basically autofill this function down. So I'm looking for the largest number between D2 to D46. Then I'll be looking for the second largest number and the third. So there's that. And again, time and dates are numbers. So I'm just going to click one of these, hit the format painter, and click that right there. Six hours, 20 minutes, and 55 seconds. Perfect match, which is correct. But watch this. 
So the second largest is four hours right there. Pull down and there we go. So someone taking two minutes and 35 seconds or two minutes and 33 seconds doesn't bother me because five questions were either yes or no. And the fifth question was either multiple check boxes. So that was pretty fast. But question six said, do you have any comments? So it could easily take two minutes to do this. So I'm okay, basically, starting at number five. So I want to eliminate, though, the top four, and I'm also going to eliminate the bottom four. So we've got 45. If I want to eliminate the top four and the bottom four, I'm doing some math here in my head. 45 total survey results times 20% is the number nine. 45 times 0 0.2 is the number nine. The number nine, because it's an odd number, will round down to eight. The number eight is going to exclude the top four and the bottom four from the 45. So here we go with this function that I haven't done yet, equals trim mean D2 through D46, comma, this function I did it the other day, what percentage do you want to show? I don't want to pick up the top four numbers, and I don't want to pick up the bottom four numbers. So that's why it's 20%. If I just did 10%, that would be only four numbers and it'd be the top two and the bottom two. The 20% is going to be nine numbers. You can't do an odd number, so it'll make it eight. It always rounds down. So that comes out to that number there. Let's make it 45 seconds. Let's test it. Ready? Click in here one time anywhere. There's filters whenever you put a table in. The table is going to show you filters, by the way, right there. Hit the arrow for filter. I'm going to sort largest to smallest. 45 times 0.2 was the number nine. Took it to eight. So the top four missing, the bottom four missing. I know I keep saying that, but just to... So the top four missing... And the bottom four are missing. Look in my status bar, the average zero colon zero zero colon 45. Perfect. It is the exact number that I have in that cell right there. That is why if you're looking for the average and you've got outliers, this trim mean function is such a cool function to use. I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> this is actually me working. I thought about calling Chris working, but I thought that was a dumb name. <laughs> anyway, feel free to subscribe, ring the bell. Any questions about any of the functions we did here? So this was, where are we at here? We're at 15 minutes, a somewhat long video, but we did a lot of cool functions and I'm showing you how I analyze Microsoft data from Microsoft Forms which is part of your Microsoft 365 and is such a cool feature. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.